Hey guys, Michael the DC Multiverse Collector here. Really excited to be giving you a look at the McFarlane Toys Batman Animated Series uh, Condiment King Builder Figure Wave. Today I'll be having a look at the Batman and Robin figures uh, and in a future video we'll be looking at Mr. Freeze, Scarecrow and the Builder Figure Condiment King. So please keep an eye out for that video. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe, click that notification bell so you don't miss it when they go up. Um, but for now, today, we're going to look at Batman and Robin. Now, right off the bat, I know that these figures are largely reuse and re-release of DC Collectibles um, figures in the Batman animated series line. Um, and I know there have been multiple releases of figures broadly using the same sculpt. Um, I think there might be some unique aspects to these figures, particularly in terms of the paint job, but I'm not super familiar with them. Um, I haven't collected any of the previous DC Collectibles versions, so these are largely new to me. So if you're looking for like a detailed comparison with the previously released versions, you're not going to get them from this video. But what I hope to bring to this video is a unique, fresh perspective to these figures, looking at them with an objective um, eye, not necessarily comparing them to anything you know, from days gone by, I'm just going to look at these as an offering in 2023 for Batman fans, and particularly for fans of the Batman animated series, of which I am a huge one. Um, it, it's fair to say that this is the show that defined my childhood and my love of Batman. Uh, Tim Burton's 1989 film was sort of the genesis of it, and then this show came out and I was hooked. You know, I'd watch it every Saturday morning. Um, hugely influential um, on my life in many ways. It, it means so much to me. So, um, you know, uh, I don't come to this super objectively. I, I have strong feelings about this version of the character and how he should look, and um, I'll bring that to bear in this review. So just a fair warning. In terms of the packaging, um, I think these look really great. I love that sort of classic opening credits design there with the Batman sort of uh, hidden behind his cape. I, I really think this looks all fantastic. You can see the Condiment King there, um, you know, Beautiful art on the side and on the back shows us Condiment King, shows us the parts that come with the figure and it shows you the entire wave and you'll see that we have Scarecrow, Batman, Robin and Mr. Freeze. Uh, so yeah, I think these are beautifully produced in terms of the packaging. I think they look immaculate, um, but the question is, how cool are they? Let's get them open and have a look. Okay, starting with Batman, here's everything you get in the package. So for a start, you get a collector card, much like the DC Multiverse figures. Very standard bio on the back. I think it might even be the same wording as the DC Multiverse bio for Batman. But anyway, nice, you know, art on the card. We might refer to this art later when we talk about the figure, but that's what that is. We also get the builder figure pieces for Condiment King. You'll see the Batman comes with two arms. They look quite nice. We'll look at Condiment King separately when I review uh, Mr. Freeze and Scarecrow, so stay tuned for that. Next, you'll see that Batman comes with a Batarang and two sets of additional hands, plus an extra hand with a grapnel gun and the grapnel gun accessory. Now, I believe these two hands here are meant to be designed for holding the Batarang. Um, you could also slip the grapnel gun in one of those hands. There are some fisty hands. The hand with the grapnel gun in it and the separate grapnel gun. It's a nice selection of alternate hands and accessories, and I'm pretty much uh, confident that this was part of the original release in DC Collectibles as well. So that's what you get there. So for the main event, here is Batman himself. Now, my first impression of this is that it's a fairly accurate representation of what Batman looked like in the animated series. Um, and it's broadly evocative of that Kenner action figure I had when I was a kid. Um, but in many respects, you know, there are things that throw me off a little bit. So from a purely aesthetic level, I think, you know, the proportions in general are pretty accurate to the source material. If I look at that sort of broad shoulder, skinny leg look, that is Batman, Kevin Conroy Batman, the Batman we know and love. Um, however, I think the head, now this is the same head as we got on the DC Collectibles version, you know, years ago, but... It just doesn't quite look angular enough to me. Like from some angles, it looks really, really good. But from some angles, it just looks a little bit round. Let me show you that card art. See, it's pretty good. It's pretty good, but maybe just not quite as sharp as it needs to be. It, it's, it's like 90% there, in my opinion. Good, but not perfect. Um, but generally pretty good. 
Um, you'll see that the bat logo on the front um, is a bit round and you'll see that it's just slightly wonky. Like I think the paint is slightly misapplied. You can see that it doesn't cover up the whole sculpt. I wish there was a black outline around it too. Um, you'll see that he's got an ab crunch, which I'm not sure was there on the original DC Collectibles release. Someone in the comments will have to let me know. I don't, I think this is new. I don't think that the original DC Collectibles had an ab crunch, but you see it's quite roughly cut. You can kind of see like some jagged edges, which is very unusual. You don't, you don't often see that. And with such a clean sort of uh, plain sculpt, all those little flaws like that stick out quite a lot. So I'm not sure how great that looks and whether it's actually worth it for an ab crunch. Um, and then you'll see, you know, the legs look pretty good, but there's just a roughness to the sculpt here. Like, see the plastic there? See, there's a little bit of deformation. And um, I noticed, you know, in the arms, there's a lot of plastic here. It's just sort of a bit shredded. I don't know, there's just, there's something a little bit um, rough and ready about this um, that I wasn't sort of expecting. You will see uh, right off the bat that this comes with a cloth cape uh, or a nylon cape, whatever this is. I'm pretty sure the original DC Collectibles one didn't have one. I'm, I'm actually a fan of cloth capes. I don't really like how this looks. It's just like, kind of like a strip that just flops down. It's not particularly dynamic. It doesn't look like real cloth. Um, I like that it's blue on the inside, that's something, but I think a sculpted cape would have been better. This really reminds me of a Lego cape. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Lego, but when they do capes for characters, they just sort of like this plasticky nylon fabric that just hangs flat like that. I also think the cape is a tiny bit narrow. Um, Batman the Animated Series sort of... That Batman had quite a large cape that was always draped around him. You could sort of fold it around his body and he was always sort of shrouded in it. You can't shroud this Batman in this cape. Um, it's too small. Um, and I think they couldn't have made it any bigger using this material because it would have been too stiff. So yeah, I'm not sure why they didn't go with a sculpted cape. Um, you'll see that the way the cowl is attached, it, it kind of has a bit of gappiness under here. So depending on how you move this around, there can be quite a gap there. You kind of have to push it into place to make it look good. Uh, the other elephant in the room, I think, is the paint job. Um, you'll see that they've done cell shading on this figure or an attempt to do cell shading. So there's this kind of greeny, gray application all around him, all over the figure. Uh, there's some light mustard on his face, um, trying to give him that cell shaded look. I don't think this has worked. I, I don't think this has ever worked really um, successfully. Uh, I know that they did a Marvel Legends X-Men VHS series with cell shading and they were all routinely pretty ugly. I don't think this is hideous. I, I just think it would have looked better without. And I think that's borne out when you look at the previous releases, which I have seen before, and I think they look better than this. So aesthetically, this is a real mixed bag. Like um, some parts of it I, I quite like and some parts of it I just think don't quite hit the mark. Um, so aesthetically, you know, it's probably a seven or a seven out of 10 overall. Um, it, it gets the job done. He'll look good on a shelf, but is he as good as he could look? I, I don't think he is. In terms of articulation, I know that these sort of old DC collectibles molds, which is, this is just a use of that old mold, aren't the best articulated figures around. A friend of mine, shout out to Dave, has sort of warned me about the brittleness of these figures, although he says they were fixed in later releases. And there is certainly a stiffness to the articulation. Um, you'll see that they're single jointed elbows, so you're not gonna get much movement. And um, there's only a swivel and a hinge in the, in the wrist, which is probably okay for this sort of a figure. Um, this does have the diaphragm cut, so it's quite ratcheted and stiff. You can get him down about that much, bend him back, that much, not much going on. Um, head tilt, he can look down that much, look up that much. You get a bit of rock from side to side, tilting, and it can spin 360 degrees, so that's okay. Legs, he can do the splits, though why you'd ever want to get this figure in the splits position, I have no idea. Um, there's no swivel. Yeah, there's not much swivel there, but do you need it? I don't think so. Double jointed knees, yeah. So you can actually get quite a bit of articulation there, but I don't know. The cut there is pretty, pretty ugly, but you know, it's okay. Um, and the foot articulation, oh, he's got boot swivel. So that's nice. You don't see that on DC Multiverse figures. So it's very, 
uh, novel to get boot swivel and the feet go up and down, swivel at the boot, no toe articulation, but that's fine. So, you know, it's it's average articulation, um, not as bad as I've heard. Um, it doesn't feel like it's gonna break, so that's nice. It seems like durability has been improved if if what my friend told me is true. Um, send emails to Dave if, if he's wrong, but um, I think this is quite good. You'll also notice that the gauntlets here rotate around the wrist, so that's nice. You get a bit of extra posability out of the gauntlets. You can angle them how you like. So yeah, that is Batman, who doesn't come with a display stand, and because he's got tiny little feet and skinny legs, he can be quite hard to stand, but there you go. Not a bad figure, maybe not as good as he could and should have been. All right, so now let's take a look at Robin. Now, this is the Dick Grayson version of Robin from the animated series. Um, one of my favourite Robins, probably my favourite Robin. Tim Drake comes close, but anyway. What you get in the box is the collector's card with that very nice art which you can see shows that this resembles the figure very well and the figure resembles the art really well. Just in case you need it, there's the bio for Dick Grayson. He also comes with this nifty little whip bolo rope, which I think is exactly the same as the accessory that came with the DC Collectibles version. This is really, really flexible uh, and will fit in the hand. So that's kind of nice, I guess. You also get uh, the legs for Condiment King. Um, again, while I'll be reviewing that when I do Scarecrow and Mr. Freeze, so keep an eye out for that. All I'll say for right now is that these legs are extremely flippy floppy. So anyway, it'll be interesting to see if these can support the weight of the figure when he's assembled, but you know, stay tuned to find out. Robin also comes with uh, five sets of extra hands in addition to his default hands. Let's go in for a closer look. You'll see we get two gesture hands, two fist hands, and a hand with the grapnel gun included, which is quite cool. So in terms of the figure itself, I think this looks really quite good. It's very faithful to the source material. I think that head sculpt is perfect. Um, just like Batman, I think the cell shading really lets this down. I think the cell shading on the face is pretty bad. I think on the body, Robin fares a little bit better. That sort of skin tone mustard on his face and arms is horrible, but this shadowy sort of darker red down here is okay, and the darker green on the pants is okay. Sort of looks like he's wet his pants, but I think it's generally acceptable, and I think the boots are okay too. Um, you'll see there's not a lot of cell shading on the cape. There's none at all, actually, and you'll notice that this is a rubber cape, which I just think looks so much better than the cloth cape they gave Batman and um, it allows it to resemble the animated series looks so much better. So I don't know why they didn't um, give Batman his molded plastic cape. I also think the cell shading on the belt kind of looks okay. I think that adds some sort of dimension to it. Um, it's not the best. The paint is a little bit sloppy, you know? Uh, it's, it's not great and I wish they hadn't done it, but I, th I think the worst offender is this paint on the face. I just don't know what they were thinking. It's, it just doesn't work just doesn't work. Um, but otherwise, it's a really great looking Robin figure. Like the proportions are bang on. He's got these skinny little legs that are just sort of perfect. Um, the head looks great. The proportions are great. You know, it, it it's what it's meant to look like in terms of the sculpt. And it's not surprising, you know, this figure's been around for years. You sort of, you know what it's like by now. One thing I will notice about the aesthetics is that the paint on the joint there is just, it's kind of like, has it scratched off? I mean, this is what it came out of the packaging like. I haven't done this. That's what it looked like in box. You'll see on the, that side, there's paint on the hinge. This side, the paint seems to have not been applied or worn off. And that's really ugly. And I don't know why that's the case. You'll see his arms only articulate less than 90 degrees. So not much going on. And you'll see that, you know, he's got the same stiffness as Batman. So he'll kind of do what you want him to do largely, but you know, this arm's not doing anything because of that shoulder uh, cape draped over the shoulder. The hands are rotating and hinging, not much going on there. No diaphragm cut on this Robin, so absolutely no ab crunch, but he swivels at the waist. And you'll see he's got very strange leg joints here, which allow him to do the splits. That looks weird, but he can do it. Um, only single jointed knees on this, so not even 90 degrees. Boot swivel, which is nice. And the foot hinges up and down. No toe articulation, but that's to be expected. Um, and the head, you get a decent left 
and right head tilt. He looks up that much. And ugh, not down. He can't look down. Just by the way that's designed. So he looks up, but not down. Uh, and the head swivels 100, 360 degrees. So articulation is what you expect. It's average for this sort of uh, different style of figure. Um, aesthetics, I mean, the mold itself is great looking. The paint is not great looking, you know. Uh, at least the paint that's not the cell shading looks fine, but the cell shading looks bad, you know. And that's such a great head sculpt. I think that it's just ruined by that cell shading, which makes me a bit sad, but yeah. That's Robin. Uh, again, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. I think this is actually probably better than Batman. I'll give him a 7.5 out of 10. Um, I think this one really captures the source material better than the Batman, and I think it's generally a really good-looking figure. Um, what do I think of these figures overall? Well, I think I've summed it up. They are pretty good, but very flawed. They're 7 out of 10 figures, 7.5 maybe at best. Um, your mileage will vary depending on how much you love or loathe the cell shading. I don't like it very much. Uh, and I think it spoils the elegance of, of the design. So, um, you know, articulation is nothing to roam, write home about, but you're not really looking for these, at these figures for the articulation. They're old moulds, so we kind of knew what we were getting. Um, the question is, do these justify their existence? Sort of. If you never got your hands on the original releases, it's a good chance to get them now. Plus you get that Condiment King Builder figure, which is a brand new figure, which is the draw. So overall, good, definitely not great, middling to good. Um, there's a lot to love and a lot to sort of, you know, turn your nose up at. So it's uh, it's a mixed bag. But um, look, look forward to the Mr. Freeze and Scarecrow reviews. I think I'll have a lot to say about those. We'll also check out the Condiment King Builder figure. Should be interesting um, to see a brand new figure in this, ray, in this sort of um, Batman animated series line. Um, keep your notification bell button pressed, subscribe, like this video if this has been in any way helpful, and look, uh, until next time, happy collecting and thank you so much for watching.